Hey, y'all. All right. I got a question. I got a question. How many times have you sat at your computer and stared at it blankly because you cannot figure out what to put on your social media post that day? I mean, if All you're the time. not raising your hand, if you're not in your car listening right now to the podcast and nodding and saying, amen, you're pretty special because everybody I know has that problem. So we're going to help you today. And how are we going to help you? We have a special guest that we're spotlighting today. If you've seen our other episodes, you have already met her. If you are new you're getting ready to meet somebody who's got a lot of great ideas and information on social media. Kathy, welcome. Hi. Hi, everybody. So excited. I know. Aren't we excited? We love to get new ideas and we love when Kathy comes on. Um, Kathy, I want you to just real briefly, because I know you've been on several episodes, but if somebody here for the first time Give them a brief introduction, and if y'all want more, there's previous episodes you can go hear more from Kathy. But give a brief introduction before we delve into this important topic of social media. Of course. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. It is a pleasure to be with Molly and Libby and Samantha. My first time on a podcast with Samantha, so yay! <laughs> yes. And I absolutely love your community. So this is a real treat. My background, if you don't know me, I'm Kathy Terrell. I'm known on social media um, as I love to be selling, and I do love to be selling. My background is performing arts. So um, I'm trained as a professional actress and came to New York City to pursue that, and I did. And I was on Soap Bombers, you may know me. <laughs> I was on um, All My Children, Another World, Guiding Light. I performed regionally. Um, also on television, I was on Law and Order Special Victims. A couple people have caught me I on the episodes. <laughs> I'll get these great messages. Kathy, we just saw you. And I'm like, yeah, that means a residual check is coming. Yay, cha-ching. Right. Um, <laughs> and I was like, yay. Um, special Victims and also regular Law and Order. I was a regular as a court stenographer there. And again, people will spot me. Um, so oh, I haven't seen that yet. Oh, I gotta yes, look. yes. Okay. Uh, take a look at the court stenographer. See if you recognize me. Um, and <laughs> we'll all be binging Law and Order now as we live. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I gotta tell you. So one thing that's fun with Law and Order, just quick aside, is to watch the technology. Because if you watch the very old Law and Orders, they're on cell phones that look like walkie talkies. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And then you sort of watch it. So I, I get a kick out of that. You can see how old <laughs> it was. So. From there, I was actually tapped because I was doing um, retail merchandising work in between acting gigs, which a lot of actors do um, in retail and major brand. Actually, it was Brita Waterfilter spotted me, asked me if I would be their product presenter on QVC Shopping Channel. QVC vetted me. I got approved and I did that for over six years for Brita and for other products. Loved it and learned a ton about retail, a ton about presenting. Um, and think about it, really, QVC liked uh, was the pioneer for a lot of online selling things that now we as eBay sellers, Etsy sellers, Shopify sellers get to enjoy. I mean, they really pioneered the whole thing because you were buying things that you weren't holding in your hand. Um, mm -hmm. So from there, what happened was my mom got sick. Uh, she was in New York. The rest of my family's on the West Coast. So I left QVC and presenting on QVC to be more home-based in New York, not to do the commute, um, to take care of her. And while I was taking care of mom, I started selling on eBay because I wanted something really part-time and flexible. And I figured, hey, this is a good time to start decluttering our apartment and found that I loved it. So then after mom passed, I scaled my eBay and within a couple of years became a full-time eBay seller. And the eBay uh, radio show, which was the predecessor to, predecessor to the podcast, spotted me and I became a regular with them, which was a great honor. And from there, eBay tapped me and I became a presenter with senior staff at some of their live events, including eBay Open, um, and just kept going. I have Facebook group. I have um, eBay selling membership. And part of um, my journey with eBay was really studying social media as it started to grow. Um, and it's still growing, if you haven't noticed. So yeah. studying with people like Mari Smith, who Facebook actually hires to teach uh, Facebook marketing um, to small business people. And I got to study with her and meet her. Um, also, Kim Garst, who's a Forbes top uh, social media expert. So studying with them, learning that, and then bringing that information um, with me to eBay, because as sellers... No matter what platform you're on, whether you're on Poshmark, whether you're on Etsy, whether you have a Shopify store, whether you're on eBay, it's great the organic traffic that you might get from certain sites like a Poshmark or an eBay. 
but it's well worth your while to spend a bit of time driving your own traffic. This is particularly true with a Shopify store, but even on the other platforms, because things happen. Sometimes there's things that happen when there's a transition or an update or they're um, really bumping up, like this happened recently with eBay changing their promoted listings, um, the way they charge for promoted listing standard, but with Etsy, where they really changed the ads, Bonanza recently really started to emphasize ads. And when you have a lot of paid things that you need to do to get traffic on various sites, it's worth it to take that 30 minutes, that 40 minutes a week. You can even do it in 15 if you're really you know, jammed for time to do some things to drive your own traffic where you're not having to pay anybody. You just have to put a little creative thought into it. And we're all creative. Um, to drive your own traffic from Facebook. Now, Libby would tell you she's not, but we all well, are. But we know she is. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a consignment seller, you're creative. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> all the different variables that you deal with. Creativity isn't necessarily being a performer or a painter. It's how we manage our time. It's, it's, it's looking at our products and thinking, oh, you know, I could emphasize this. I could take the picture this way. Creativity um, comes out to the universe in a lot of different ways. So we're all creative people. But the great thing with social media is it's another way that you can be in control of your business. There's so many things that we don't control. It's a great way to get traffic. And even if it only brings you a few shoppers, remember, it's only one click, one buyer to get the items sold. So yes, it's great if there's, you know, if you've got a million followers, 5,000 followers, 200 followers, whatever it is, but it's far more important to have quality, to have people that are truly buyers following you, interacting with you. Because again, it's only one click to get that one item sold. And I know many people listening to us, you may, again, you may not have tons and tons of buyers, but I bet some of you have repeat buyers and they come back yes. and they buy another top from you and another pretty piece of jewelry or another beautiful collar for their dog because they had such a wonderful shopping experience with you. And they may have found you on Facebook, on Instagram. So that's why the social media, because it really helps you to put yourself out there and attract your right fit people, because that's what you're after. It's not necessarily a numbers game. It's getting the right person to pay attention to you. Right. And to have fun. <laughs> so I'm listening to you and you're talking about showing your product, sell, sell, sell. And I'm sitting here and I just opened my social media and I'm thinking, I got to go get a bunch of product and sell, sell, sell. That's a great point. So again, it's, your I always say this, it's social media. And I know you ladies are all very good with that, with the podcast and the materials that you put out, which is one of the reasons I'm attracted to you to listen to you about consignment and about reselling is because I trust you. Mm -hmm. And because I like you, you know what I mean? You discover the people that are like your people, um, that you enjoy them, you enjoy their manner. And it's the same thing on social media. So let's say um, I have, it's springtime. So let's say I have a bunch of spring tops, or let's say I sell pet products. I have a bunch of cute uh, pet collars. So I look at them and I go, okay, so I've got these shirts or um, I have this home decor, whatever it is. You might have a bunch of great cookie jars and you look at them and you go, Okay, is there anything unifying about this? It could be the function. It's all cookie jars or it's all dog collars, but it could be color. Colors, like it's all pastel or they're all vibrant or they're all really, really cool patterns like some plaids and some paisleys. And then I go, okay, so let's say it's pastel and we're going into springtime. So then I think, okay, springtime, pastel, what social content can I, and social means that you're not putting a product up. What social content can I come up with that's spring related and pastel -y related? A couple of things. One is you could go into a paint store like Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever and just go to the paint section when they have like our local Home Depot. They have all the paint ships up so you can see all the colors. I can take a picture of that and go, so what's your favorite shade of pink or yellow or blue or whatever? Mm -hmm. And all I'm doing is taking a picture at Home Depot. You can be in your garden. And the flowers are starting to come up. You got some pretty daffodils. I take pictures of city flowers all the time for that. Everybody loves flowers. I don't know you anybody do, that I does love them. I just I did that last week on my page. Yes, you did. <laughs> People love flowers. Flowers are like pets. People yep. love to love. 
who doesn't like to look at, you know, the daffodils are coming up or the crocuses or the lilacs are blooming or, you know, you're putting your bulbs in the ground, you know, whatever it is. So you take a picture of that and let's say it is tulips coming up or it's daffodils coming up and it's, let's say it's yellows and maybe greens. So you put it up and you can say, what is your favorite springtime flower? Or the daffodils blooming where you are yet? Do, um, do you have lilac bushes near you? Whatever you want to say, you want something that's pleasant and if possible to ask a question because you're looking to get some kind of interaction, but you want to be yourself. You don't want to be too fakey about it. So again, you look at it, okay, if I'm looking at a bunch of daffodils or a lilac bush, what would I say? Like, you know, do you like lilacs? Do you have a lilac bush near you? Uh, same thing. I put the daffodils up. Are the daffodils up where you are? Because they might be in Florida and they don't have a bunch of daffodils. Mm -hmm. They've got palm trees. So you, and, but they'll respond, Kathy, I'm in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> we've got palm trees or I'm in Arizona. We've got cactuses, but you're getting a response. You're also finding out something about your people. Your people are in the Southwest. Your people are in Texas or your people you'll find out they're all over. So they go, yeah, the daffodils are up. And this is what's really gold on social media. This actually happened to me last week. They put up a picture of the flowers in their area. Oh, this is Love gold. <laughs> Social yeah. media algorithms go, oh, Kathy is the most fascinating person ever because not only do her people respond, and I've seen this on Libby's and Molly's social media, and Sam comes in and comments on some of mine. When people respond with a picture, it is gold. So mm -hmm. comment is great. Gifts and emojis are great. Written word or written sentence trumps just a cute little emoji or like because it's taking more energy out of the person. And if they respond with an image, your organic post, organic means you're not paying anybody anything to promote it, goes up. And if you look at it and you have analytics, whether you're on Facebook, whether you're on a, a Facebook business page, um, Instagram business, and it's why you want business accounts because you get analytics, is you click it and it'll see you reached 50 people, 60 people, 80 people, five people. And I'm telling you, particularly when people comment and if they share something back, a picture, or if they share an emoji back too, that'll be good. So comment and emoji, but comment with picture and an original picture is gold. And you will see that post, if you typically reach like 10 or 15 people, that post will reach 80, 90 or more because you got the comment with the picture, you have to realize that the social media platforms, and it doesn't matter if it's Instagram, it doesn't matter if it's Facebook, it doesn't matter where it is, TikTok, what they want is that Libby, Molly, Sam, Kathy spend all day there. They don't want you listing. They don't want you shopping. They don't want you talking to your family. Or if you do that, you've got your phone right there and you're really staring at Facebook and not at your family. They want you all day. So what, any content that gets engagement, which means a like, a click, a comment, a gift, anything will get more promotion because they're after you spending all day on social. So you have those cute posts. So you've got your flowers up. You might have a cute pet with a cute little pet collar because people love pets. You might have um, a delicious meal of like a garden salad with all kinds of wonderful colors. Yeah, I want to back up a second because I sure. know it's a place where we really intersect on our belief of this is you have that writer's block. You don't know what you're going to post. Right. And I always tell people, go back to your ideal customer. Yep. Find a, a thing online. I know Kathy has one. I know we have one. And you want to know who you're talking to, because yep. a lot of us, especially consignment sellers, sell a humongous variety of items, right? We have the kitchen sink, we have uh, diamond earrings, we have everything. So how do you figure out like where you're going and how you figure out where you're going is your ideal customer. Yep. And we do an episode on that. So I'm going to link that up. But um, definitely know who you're talking. And you can revise that over time. Like as Kathy said, like. As you're getting comments and you see a lot of your shoppers are in the Southwest, maybe you revise that ideal customer, but it will really help narrow your focus down and know who you are talking to. So you are not trying to talk to everyone because that, it just doesn't work. All it right. So because you want to be targeted. And the other thing is, if you go, Kathy, I have no idea. Or Libby, I have no idea. Molly, I got no idea who this person is. Guess what with social media? Click on them. Go to their page. Now, again, people have privacy settings, but you can usually still see. A certain amount of stuff you'll find out yeah. are they a mom are they a dad 
you'll see roughly, and also you can look at their pictures. What stuff do they post? Are they posting food all the time? These people are foodies. Are they posting travel things all the time? They're really into traveling or their cruise pictures. And then I know, I may not know exactly the age, but you can guess, especially if they've got, you know, things up about, you know, nursing a young child, you go, okay, they're probably like in their thirties, maybe their forties, twenties. Um, they're a grandparent and um, they love to travel. You'll see like things that they're interested in, like they love the national parks or they love camping is now you know your person is a camping person, your person is a cruise person. So maybe when you go on a cruise, you'll put up some pictures of your cruise. They put up a lot of pictures of Manny Petties. They're a beauty person, good. So now we know Manny Petties, maybe some makeup, maybe some hair. If you've got you know, things for hair, hairstyling, maybe jewelry, You know, because this is a Manny Petty person, maybe I'll put up a picture of my Manny Petty. And this is our segue before I put up the picture of my jewelry. What social content appeals to my person? Again, the flowers, the food. And again, when you're, like Molly was saying, what on earth do I put up? What are you doing during your day? You eat breakfast. Believe it or not, people love pictures of breakfast. They love pictures of coffee. Okay, then what am I doing? I'm taking my dog for a walk. People love that. You go, but Kathy, it's just my dog. For they love it. Take a picture of you and it can be your feet. It's not that you have to put up a picture of you with the dog next to you if you don't want to do that. Is you know, the picture of the dog walking, you know, down the sidewalk or in the yard or playing in the yard or whatever. Again, it's social content that people are discovering a little bit about you because people like to know who they're buying from and also something related to them because you've looked at the images, like Libby said, you've looked at your ideal customer, you've thought about who they are and they enjoy animals. They enjoy their meal. They enjoy traveling or gardening or whatever. And then you, as you go through your day, like I passed a beautiful florist shop. I took like 15 pictures. I'm not going to post all 15 at once, but I'll do one flower picture one day. Then maybe five or six days later, I'll do another. So if you see a really cool image, um, I'm trying to think of something, a beautiful trees blooming. Again, a delicious, oh, you might be at a restaurant. There's all kinds of cool food out or they have the dessert cart goes by. Oh run up to that dessert cart, right? And start snapping some pictures <laughs> and then you can space it out. So are you a cheesecake person or are you a chocolate cake person? Most people definitely vote on desserts. <laughs> yeah. oh, I, don't, I don't know that we've done that one. I got to try that now. <laughs> we've done the pie thing. We've definitely done the pie thing. Pie, yeah. great chocolate. Are you brownie or cake? Um, Again, and I did one on ice cream because people love to vote on their favorite ice cream flavors. Mm -hmm. And again, and somebody might be a sorbet person. Yay. So they'll post that. I love sorbet. Um, and they might put up a picture of themselves eating a sorbet. Yay. But again, is I'm thinking about what's my post. So let's say it's jewelry. Okay. Um, and let's say I might have some really pretty costume jewelry that I'm selling. So I'm thinking about, okay, more fashion beauty, maybe accessorizing, but the flowers could lead into that because of the color. Right. So let's say the daffodils are all yellows and green and I'm looking at the jewelry and I've got some really pretty jewelry with some yellows and greens. OK, um, the meal. So let's say it's a dessert cart. And then let's say some of the jewelry or the clothing is more formal, more of a date night kind of thing or a special evening out or a special occasion, a wedding guest kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Then you could do the delicious dessert right as a thing because it's sort of like a, a an af an evening out or a meal out and then go okay when you're going out um you know here's some bracelet ideas for you to dress up that outfit so i'm starting with my social post that's oriented towards my person the way i'm learning my person is i look at the inventory i'm selling and I think about who's going to be buying. And again, even if it's soup to nuts, you might have two or three different ideal customers. So it might be women like in their 30s, 40s, and 50s. But then I might have some cool stuff that's more, let's say, like male. I might have some male grooming things, like some beard grooming things. So that's going to be men. But it's also going to be women that shop for their men. Okay. So you always got to think about that, too. It's like with baby stuff. It's parents but it's also aunties, uncles, grandparents, godparents. So if it's a really, I'm thinking of our friend Kara who does those beautiful handcrafted baby quilts. Mm, 
Yeah. It could be the parent, but more likely somebody buying a beautiful handcrafted baby quilt is the godmother, the auntie. You know what I mean? They're going to be buying a really beautiful, ornate uh, baby quilt and maybe one that's customized. So you got to look at what you're selling and think about. It's not necessarily always the parent. It's the community around the child. It's the same thing too, like with wedding gifts. You think about, okay, who's buying the wedding? Like if you look at something, oh, this is perfect as a wedding gift. Okay, who's buying wedding gifts? And at this price point, who would be the most likely to be buying this? Or is it a great bridesmaid gift? So it would be the bride buying it um, kind of thing. So mm -hmm. it's always, what's the social post? Which could be like, if it's bridal stuff, could be, I mean, there's so many things you could do. Flowers, you can do pretty right. meals. If you go by a venue that's really good for bride, um, or if you see like a really pretty canopy or you've been at a friend's wedding and you can do some pictures um, that you can reuse, you know, that kind of thing is great. But I mean, always we transitioned into very little selling on our social media and we saw it, it, it's it's way better in the long run. We do very little selling. I mean, we do a live sale and it builds, you know, the week will kind of yep. build up to that. But um, just the fact of like using social media so people get to know you and your mm -hmm. brand. So when they do need something or they are looking for something, they're going to come to you. So we actually do very little, very little selling. And it's more of like a, like you said, like a social, like a social kind of thing. So people do come to us when they're ready to purchase something. We rarely put things up like, hey, buy this, you know, bracelet or something like that. Yeah, was that for Conchi consignment? Yeah. Or is, mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But again, looking at your name, I know you're a consignment mm -hmm. store. Yep. Right. And that's not going to be true for all resellers because sometimes mm -hmm. your name, uh, you know, I'm thinking of something like a New York City. I love New York. You know what I mean, or I'm trying to think of so people do, you know, such and such closet or such and such boutique. They may not totally get what it's about. And that's why. And also, if I scroll down your social media, even though you don't have a lot of products, there is some in there. And then you do mention the live shows. Mm -hmm. so that thing of looking at um, and you're building community. So you're building right. community around your brand. Um which is that, and for most sellers uh, are looking at, I want people to know who I am and I want you to come shop with me. So right. it's having the social posts because nobody wants, um, and, I, and I'll get these people as private clients sometimes and they're going, well, Kathy, why, are, why am I not getting any clicks? Just like I'm sure with some of the clients that you work with. And the reason they're not getting any clicks is because it's endless product posts and nobody wants endless product posts. So even if you look at a huge brand like a Macy's or a Nordstrom, go and look at their social media. And even on things that are a product post, it's extreme. Social media has really changed the way people sell. You very rarely see a straight up sales post, even on huge brands like a Martha Stewart. It's very much, you know, here's my kitchen. Here's this yummy pie. And oh, by the way, here's the pie dish I used. Mm -hmm. you know, to create my yummy pie. I was looking at, I think it was Macy's. They were doing like weekend clothes outfits and it was cute. So they had the model showing the outfit on a hanger and then with video editing, it was on her. So they showed the outfit and then it was on her. So it grabbed your attention because of the video. So it was very social, you know, pretty model, cute outfit, bam, it was on her. And it got you thinking about, oh, well, how would that look like on me? Um, it's like almost like you want people to come to you and say, you know, you have a picture of like a beautiful vignette and you want somebody to say to you instead of you saying to them, hey, you know, we have this for sale. You want them to come to you and say, oh, what about that little basket in the background? How much is that? Is that mm -hmm. for sale? Like you want them to be engaging with you rather than you giving stuff to them like, hey, buy this. Hey, and buy this. in your profile, and this is important, and I've seen your guys' profiles and it's good. So in your Instagram profile, in your Facebook profile, in your TikTok profile, wherever you're doing your social media, make it very clear that you are a seller. It is not a personal account. But again, you can be very social about it, which is um, purveyor of sustainable fashion. Um, committed to keeping things out of landfill um, with sustainable fashion, um, online boutique, uh, specializing in plus size women's clothing, you know, whatever it is, 
that it is clear from your profile that you're a seller because that way when you have the pretty dress or you're showing the pretty sweater or you're showing the shelves um i see maria stylist or do this you'll see the shelves with the gorgeous you know boutique handbags right. is that you know they're for sale now sometimes they're sold right and i and i see right. sellers that do that you're like darn but that's great because you see the variety of things that have sold it tells you the person's a successful seller because I see you guys do. I think it's on Wednesdays, right? Um, what sold Wednesdays? What sold Wednesdays? So I go. You oh. need a social media idea that's easy. Here's one for you. What <laughs> sold Wednesday? Or show the sales Saturday or whatever. Right? Once a week. So I see show your sales. things that have sold, <laughs> and you know it's always the fear of missing out. You're like, oh, I love that bag, right? You're like, darn. <laughs> So then you go in and click and you follow them, but it's a very social way to let people know that you sell and that you're a successful seller because all this stuff sold. The variety of things that sell because they can scroll through and see your other Wednesdays. So I love things like what sold Wednesday posts because it's a very, very social way to sell and for consignment sellers because you see the big variety of things that pass through your hands and it's another and they go oh i've got to follow this and the consigners right. love it when they see yes. one of their items has sold and it required when you have that block on a wednesday or on a saturday oh that's all taken care of i know exactly what i'm doing mm -hmm. i've also seen um some sellers resellers incorporate their what sold not as a whole what sold this past week but individual items maybe two or three specific items and they put them in their stories so yes. they're just like a oh, look Liz, Liz O'Kane does a beautiful Colorado re reworn does a really yep. fun job with that I love what she does I, and I've seen people too like um Jill Jill Daniels who's um oh, yeah. boutique to Jill Bijou in Maine and I saw her do a really great reel with sweaters and I was mm -hmm. going to say too for people if you are intimidated at all by video so you're like oh I'm not sure about this for reels or for stories is you've got your static images because you've created listings for Poshmark, eBay, Etsy, wherever it is. If you're not aware of this for both stories and reels, you can upload static images. Um, and the app, like for instance, with the Instagram app, it will create the video for you. And they actually have little stickers you can just click and everything. So you don't even need a video editing app or a video editor. You can literally do it yourself with static images that you have, which is great. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is to have fun. And the other thing I was just going to quickly say is if you do create an image on Canva or if you have a template like What's Up Wednesday, if you have a set template that you've created on Canva or somebody creates for you that you can just upload pictures to is anything that you create, even if it's like, um, you know, I love spring template and in it you've put maybe images of different flowers. This is slightly more intermediate advanced. I just want to tell you is save any graphics you create, like create a folder, do something so you can find them. Like for instance, if you put things up for holidays, like Mother's Day, Father's Day, uh, graduation's coming up, graduation season, prom season, Valentine's Day. If you do a specific image for a holiday is save them because you can recycle them, you can tweak them. Um, you might use it, use it next year, but you'll change the font on it or something. But anything you create, Put it in a folder so that so that you can find it. There's nothing like I, we've all done this. I'm like, I know I created this like two years ago. Uh -huh. and I can't find it. I uh, just did that yesterday. I must have spent an hour looking for this image. I needed. I do we find are, it eventually. We in the uh, reseller consignment world, we don't <laughs> just recycle pre-used goods <laughs> back into the other people's closets we recycle images and posts <laughs> <laughs> because you swear I mean, especially something like a holiday so let's say you have a really cool valentine's post and it's pure graphic there's no product in it like libby was saying it's very social i'm reaching out i'm just engaging with my community and you think oh gosh i used this last year like aren't they gonna they don't remember <laughs> it was a year ago <laughs> you're not comfortable with it use it and put it just put it with a you know take that image mm -hmm. load it into another screen and put yes. a blue background around it so it's like a frame and it changes it up a bit or or put it use it in a reel or a yes. you know put it in your story yes that's you a can great always point. recycle <laughs> but it's and it's saved because that's the other thing it saves you time so if you've allotted 30 minutes a week and 30 minutes is good you could do it in 15 but you're gonna have to work pretty fast is 
you know, and you're stuck is you can look at your older material, like what Molly was saying, Libby was saying. So I can look at something, even if it's only like a month, month and a half ago. And if I used it, um, a free app like Canva, which is free and has great graphics, um, I do use the paid one just because it gives you a few more bells and whistles. But I used right. the free for years before I went to the pay is I can go to that, I can go to my Canva account, I can pull up that graphic because it got really great engagement and it's like six weeks old. Um, you don't want to do it like two days later because that's called spamming and your people don't like seeing the same thing two days later. And like Molly said, you change the color, change the font, maybe put another image in, bam, literally in 20 seconds, you got a wonderful new graphic, download, boom, and you're done and you're good. Yep. <laughs> Simple little. Well, I don't want to forget. You had an awesome announcement for us, Kathy. Oh yes, and then I've got to get. I'm going. sorry, Molly. I, I go. totally so, cut you off. And this I literally happened like just a few hours ago. So if you're unaware of this on Instagram, it's one of the great challenges of Instagram. Unless you have a Shopify store, is you only have one clickable link. It is in your profile. Facebook different. You know, other sites are different. Instagram one clickable link. So if you posted a product post, you had to say. Click the link to my eBay store in the profile, whatever. You now, as of, and I'm going to date this, April 18th, 2023, as announced by Mark Zuckerberg, you now have five, five clickable links, five <laughs> clickable links in Instagram. <laughs> and my best, and this is huge. So you can do one for your Etsy, one for your Poshmark, one for your eBay without using apps like Linktree and Shorby. But my best understanding, and I just checked it myself, is you must go through the Instagram app. So not from the desktop. You click profile and it doesn't say, hi, now you can add five links. And you click add link and it'll, you're right now you can add up. It just allows you to do another one and then another one. And again, it just rolled out. So the way it looks may change, but this is huge for consignment it's sellers and online sellers. Game changer. I am telling you, it is just, it's when you have events and things that you do in your business and you have a link for that, that you want to share or right, a, a live show that comes on and you want to share their link on your Instagram mm -hmm. so people can find, you can't, you can't do that without taking your main link. A off. link to a coupon. To, yeah. yeah. Events yeah, that we're constantly changing and updating. Exactly, All right. I got, I got to go back to one of my building a story brand, Donald Miller. If you confuse, you lose. So think about yes. those five links. If you are a seller on five different, you may not want to use yes. your primary. If you confuse, you lose. So just really just, I know it's exciting, but take a step back and actually think about what links you are. If you're actually going to lose people by posting too many. So just Give that some consideration before you go and just use all your links up. <laughs> and the other thing is, as far as posting a product is what I'd say is like, so let's say I'm running a sale. I can say, click the link for the sale in my profile. So I'm keeping them focused. I'm not mm -hmm. saying go party on my profile. I'm letting <laughs> them know exactly where to click, where to go, rather than click the link in my profile. For instance, like I've got a Shorby link but you click it. And then when you click it, it takes you to another site with everything. So actually, I think by having the five right there can be helpful to people. So it's click the link for my sale, but I'm not having you go clicks. somewhere else. I really like the don't party on my profile. <laughs> you can come and have a cup of tea, but we're not partying on my profile. <laughs> we're not that kind of profile people. We're not that kind of profile. But I, right, I got a reel now. I'm making a reel out of this. It's too fun. You can go to my website, which is I love to be selling.com. <laughs> and I do have um, a free guide there for you. It's called the Essential Social Media Cheat Sheet. And it's got information on a lot of different sites because we didn't even talk Pinterest, which will be another time when I come and visit you ladies. Yes, yeah. yes. Yes. Because I really wanted to focus on Facebook and Instagram because I think for most people, because Pinterest has a bigger learning curve, are the easiest to jump on, particularly Instagram is really on fire right now. I find it's the easiest to get followers. It's the easiest to get organic, um, which means free engagement. And the fact that they just broke the five links clearly is showing that Meta is really focusing its attention on Instagram. They're really just doing a lot, but because it 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 is so popular, it is growing so fast. And at least for now, and again, this is April 2023, 
it's easier to get followers in organic traffic from, and they're really pushing people's posts. Like your posts will reach people that are not your followers, just to let you know. Mm-hmm. Um, that really wasn't true a couple of years back. There's a lot more of, again, once they see that it's engaging, you get a couple likes and comments on the yummy cup of coffee, you know, on the what's sold Wednesday, is that it will reach people that are not your followers. And that is huge, which is why it's worth doing that 30 minutes a week, the 15 minutes a week um, to get the traffic. And then you're driving people to your listings, your products, because we are sellers. We're community builders. We want to attract the right people and we're sellers. So the amount of products that you're putting up that even if I'm only getting a few clicks a week or a few clicks a month on that, is that that one click is a potential buyer or it's somebody that shop with me and they just love following me, interacting with me, seeing them what I'm up to. Mm-hmm. And that's so worthwhile that they go, oh, you know, there's Kanchi consignment. You know, I just bought a sweater. With it. So they're following because they just so enjoy your vibe. And that's what you want because shopping now is such a social thing. It's such a, it's really changed in the way people interact um, with who they're buying from. Uh, that they love seeing that and experiencing you when they're on Facebook, when they're on Instagram, they come and check you. And that's what you want. And as I always say, Kathy said, have fun, which I 100% agree. Nobody wants a robot. If you're putting yourself on video or something, make it fun and engaging. But what's my soapbox? I always say, be authentic, be you. Don't go on there and try to present yourself as somebody you're not. Because guess what? They can see it. They can see your expression. They can see it in your eyes. And then you're not building trust. And who you are is fabulous. You know, we're all you You need fabulous, fabulous. wonderful individuals. Some of us are shyer. Some of us are more, you know, more forthcoming. Uh, Some of us have interesting accents. Um, Is that's what it's about. that's what attracts everybody. Yes. I love that we're all very different. I love to learn from everybody and see different, different parts of the country because like you'll think, you know, I'm out here like people love it. I know for yes. me, I love seeing pictures of cows. Put up those pictures of cows. <laughs> I don't see cows in New York City, right? Or the field where there's like nothing for miles. I, I don't get that view. That's not my view when I go outside. Um, so again, and again, like me with New York city, it's like, yes, I put up pictures of cabs. People love pictures of cabs. Right. So, you know, you attract your (laughs) riding right behind you. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) But lady, this has been a joy. I need to scoot. I've got another meeting, but this is such fun. And we cannot thank you enough for coming. And as as we have you often, we will have you back soon. Always a joy. Always a joy. People. Yes. Cheers. 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 Really like what Molly was saying is. Don't get intimidated. And also, listen, if you for, haven't posted for a couple of days, that's fine. Just jump up and post when you get time. Is Don't feel, you know, like if you normally post, like let's say every three days and then something happens, you just get busy. One of the kids gets sick. Um, that's fine. So you took a break for three or four days. Jump back on. The world hasn't ended. You know, your Instagram <laughs> followers are still yeah, there. Right. Facebook is still alive. <laughs> you know, it's a couple of, it is better to jump back on and get it going again rather than going, oh, I didn't post for two weeks. Oh, what's the point? You know, they, no, get back it's on. It's not a going. diet, y'all. It's not a diet. <laughs> it's like if you didn't list for a couple of days, get listing. <laughs> Don't stop selling. Get listing. Right. Just get back on the horse. Just get back on. You're fine. So everybody, we will have the links that you need to find Kathy below in our show notes, all the necessary links you need. We'll link some of the uh, previous episodes that we talked about so you can find that. And uh, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, right? Hit that little like button for us, that little bell, ring it so you get notified because we are doing monthly lives now and you don't want to miss it. No. No. (laughs) Because we have fun. Talk about authentic selves. That's where you really see it. (laughs) All right, guys. All right. So until next time. Cheers. 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 Thanks for joining Libby, Molly, and Samantha, the ladies of Consignment Chats, as we build a resourceful community of collaborative resellers. Find all the ways to connect with us on consignmentchats.com. Episodes are available on YouTube and anywhere you get your podcasts. In addition, join our free private Facebook community.